Hey everyone, this is Devin, a.k.a. Leonard Meltzner. Howdy, y'all. I'm Victoria. And you're watching The Adventures in Odyssey Oddcast. Oddcast. Yes. I said that off time on purpose. I, I was hoping so. I was yeah. uh, very separated. So, okay. episode 12... Hopefully you enjoyed our last episode. I don't know quite what it turned out like because I haven't actually edited it yet because I had a very busy week last week at school, and school unfortunately does come in first before the odd cast. So I'll try and pump both of these episodes out today, which is Saturday, by the way, so that we can move on to our big episode next week, which is going to be our second part of the Beginner's Guide to Odyssey. So it should be another big walloping long one. Today's episode, however, should not be quite as long because we're only reviewing one episode as opposed to the regular two, due to the fact that the would-be second episode is Life Expectancy Part 1. So instead of doing two and two like we normally would, because we have one and then a three-part we're grouping it, Big Trouble under the big top this week, and then two weeks from now we'll be doing all three Life Expectancy episodes. And the interesting thing about us reviewing the Life Expectancy episodes is that we are listening to Life Expectancy Part 1, and then we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to listen to the second part, talk about it, third part, and then talk about it. Yeah, we so want to be able to talk about our, We want to be able to talk about our predictions and our thoughts without bias for what's going to happen in the future episodes. We were going to do this originally with all two parters, and we were going to do it with um, Your Servant is Listening, but we figured that since it was a Bible story that we basically already know, and it's not quite as much of a dramatic suspense, huge in the history of, of Odyssey canon episode as Life Expectancy is going to be, we didn't bother with the uh, seasonal opener this time. But we certainly will be doing it with Life Expectancy, so once we're done recording this episode, we'll record our little blurb of review for the first part. But we won't talk about that right now in case you haven't listened to it yet because you're not expecting to have listened to it yet, because that's not what this episode about. This episode is in fact about Big Trouble Under the Big Top, and so that's what we will talk about starting right now. Okay, I think the title is way too long. Can I just throw that out there? Because I was like yeah. typing out the title, and I'm like, uh, this is taking me like 10 seconds to <laughs> type out, it's way too long. As opposed to, like, Broken Armed and Dangerous or the Green Ring Conspiracy? I, I don't like the title of this one. Oh no, I don't like the title either. I, that was the first thing I said about it back when we uh, did our predictions video in episode 3 of the Oddcast. Um, first impression, my first impression, 10 seconds in, this is going to be a bad episode. <laughs> what about you? Um, well... Two words into the episode, I paused it, and I thought, Emily's voice is not a good way to start an episode. She's only said two words yeah. so far, and she already sounds, like, super smug. She's like, good detectives. I was like, oh. And then I, so I, like, wrote that out, and then I hit play, and she's like, good detectives need to not, like, make judgments or something like that. And I paused it again, and I was like, one sentence in, and now she's chastising me for my previous comment. <laughs> It was something like that. I was like, shut up, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did Matthew's voice sound different to you in this episode? Nope. I'm wondering if his voice was starting to change because it sounded a bit different to me. No, nope, and it was Zach Callison. It's not like they got Well, I, I know it's Zach Callison. I'd know if they got a different Matthew. He was doing something with Kristen Chenoweth I saw the other day on Facebook. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. Okay. Apparently she's very uh, funny, if you hadn't guessed that already. So I'm I'm not trying to... How do I say this? I'm not trying to say that hurting people is a good thing, but if they were smart at hurting people and they actually wanted to... Promotion, I thought they were actually trying to kill the person when they cut the trapeze thing. So that's why I was thinking, like, you'd think they try to cut the safety net, too. So when yeah. they fell into it, nothing would happen, but turns out they weren't trying to kill them, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, the other comment on the title, which I thought this was funny, because like like I said, from the very beginning of hearing this, I thought, that's a really cheesy title. I don't really like it. And then I listened to the episode at the beginning, and I find out that Emily, in fact, came up with this title. I'm like, see, I'm not just being biased against the title because Emily came up with it. I didn't like it before I even found out that she came up with it. And so it's like, you know, here's independent confirmation that I don't like Emily Jones. I didn't One even thing know it was her title. I don't understand is if the names she comes up with are so bad, why do they name the episodes them? Why don't they take isn't this the names the only that time? Matthew comes this is the up with? only time they've used one of her names, isn't it? No, no, it isn't. The other would be Malted Milkball Falcon. No, that that was Matthew's title. Hers was like the bird filled with chocolate that somebody stole or something like right. that. And he's like, no, Why don't you call it the malted milk? The... Stage fright was Matthew's idea, Malted Milkball Falcon was Matthew's yeah, idea. But there's another one. Was game for a mystery her idea? No, they they weren't doing the name thing back then. I'm gonna try and figure it out. Something old, something new definitely wasn't. No. Because they had to I'm, fit it in with the uh, the I'm wedding determined. poem title. I'm determined to figure this out. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. So does that mean Mitch has to come back for a third time then? For an I, so they can I have an episode not. called something borrowed. I hope not. Well, is Connie going to try and get him back or something? Something she's, borrowed. Yeah, she's going to try and borrow Mitch from Maureen. Okay, never mind. You were right. I guess there isn't. Um, Anyways, um, so uh, you were saying, Victoria, about the uh, falling off. Was there anything else you wanted to say about falling off the uh, no. phew, trapeze? Right from the... Uh, I My first impression before... Uh, the person who actually did it appeared was it was probably a clown because they're evil. Um, I I didn't really I'll get this into this more. I'll talk about it later. I'm gonna save that thought. Um, my favorite mystery that they've done is definitely the lost riddle. Yeah, that's good. Cause that's the only one where I've been like, oh, this is a good episode. I think that might have a lot to do with the fact that it had Dale in it, though. Yeah. But I and it was care. cool canon building kind of stuff, backstory things, which were always good. You know, yeah. I like backstory building and continuity. But uh, we'll get to that in our next episode review. Okay. Um, um, what I was going to so, say is right at the beginning when Emily and Matthew first show up and Uncle Max is there, and they're at a circus, and he calls Matthew my boy. I was like... This, this can't end well. I was thinking that's exactly how Mr. Skint would address people. Well, not all people, obviously, but... Oh, Buck. Yeah. Yeah. He was always I like, really my boy. I really listened to the green ring a couple and, weeks ago. And so I was like, this does not at all spell familiar trouble. It turns out it wasn't him, though. No, it wasn't. And I didn't really because think it was. I was I was like kind of a little bit suspicious of everyone. I'm like, it's a circus, so that none of them can be trusted. So I'm super. Because I'm a horrible person. That's funny because one of my good friends here is in the circus. She goes to circus school. It's cool. Oh. She does like trampoline work and acrobat stuff and silk climbing and stuff. That sounds like fun. It's really cool. Okay. Not not everyone bad is in the circus. But and she like, sings while she does it too. It's cool. That's awesome. But sometimes they're portrayed as terrifying in cartoons. The carnies, yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I meant. Yeah, I, I'm I know. Not saying, I, I'm just, you know what I mean. I'll show Liesl the episode and then she'll be like so offended. Okay. So anything else before we reveal who the obvious culprit was? Uh, well, I'm on to the Sherlock scene now, and I think you had something to say about that. No, Nina appeared before that. That's true. Yeah, I, I didn't so, comment on it until Nina, later, but the first time... Nina the first. Appears, go, go. I'll let you go first. Okay. The first time they go, and she, Emily and Matthew are like, we'll talk to... Because I, I was using the AIO wiki player, so I have the little description up there. So it's like, there's a mystery or something. Is it Esteban the knife thrower? Is it Zara the aerialist? We'll have to find out or whatever. And so they, they talk to Esteban and then they talk to Zara and then they talk to Nina. And I'm like, 
well, I guess it's Nina then, because she's not the one who's mentioned. Plus, she has access to everywhere. Plus, she just, she just, her voice sounds like someone like, I have good intentions and I'm going to perform evil acts to inadvertently try and bring them together and stuff. So Her voice sounds familiar. I'm pretty sure she's been in other episodes. I'm pretty sure. I'll look yeah. that up now. Um, I did find out, I was talking to Austin about the episode last night. I found out... One of the reasons why this episode might not be all that the rest of the album was cracked up to be is this is, in fact, a fan-written episode. This was the runner-up to the uh, scholarship contest script writing thing this year. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, because you know they have the, the script writing contest scholarship thingy, and A Jay in the Life was the winner. It was supposed to be in 56, then they bumped it to 57, and then they bumped it to 58. And Big I just want to listen to that one. Big Trouble Under the Big Top was the uh, the runner-up, the second place. And so that what about the Bible study one? The, um, no, that wasn't fan-written, I don't think. No, wasn't that supposed to be in album 56? Wait, which one? It was, like, along with a jig in the life. It, there's, like, this one that had Bible study in the life. Or in the title. Bible Network? Yeah, no. Wait, yeah, never mind. Never what? mind. I listened to that one. Never mind. Um, that said Bible study, so that's why I was confused. Oh, yeah, that's what I was doing. Okay. So, Big Nina trauma. appears in the episode five minutes in. Second she starts talking, I'm like found the culprit that was easy and then at the end when they're all like it was nina i'm like yes it was obvious if i was emily i would have just talked to her and been like you did it considering then, she was trying to be all sherlockian and stuff i mean she didn't do that bad at playing sherlock nina's voice actor isn't on here yeah, they only have to be oh. the voice actors because the episode is still too new, she, I guess. She reminded me of a girl from, not Wendy, her sister. Uh, ah, yes, her. From, is that her? The Clock Tower, possibly. Yeah, because that sounds like her. I listened to that one a little while ago, too. That's so a good episode. When, I know people don't like that episode, but I like it. I like that one. And the music's really good for it. Yeah, um... There's some parts in it I don't like, though. But anyway, uh, when Emily started saying, like, you were in a relationship with this person, you have, like, foot problems or something, I was just like, they done been Sherlocked by Emily. That's pathetic. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, Emily's playing Sherlock. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. You know, it's funny, because I was sure Nina was the person, and then Zara said that she's, like, she made the comment, uh, nothing hurts more than being betrayed by a family member. I was like, is that supposed to be foreshadowing? Is it, was it one of her brothers all along? Because that sounds like foreshadowing, but then later it turned out that that family is how they referred to, like, the whole circus. So, Well, I, I figured that, because it's like the family of circus folk. That's how most people call their groups. They call them a family. Well, I didn't realize that that's what she was talking about, but... No okay, idea. who actually enjoys clowns? Because, like, when the clown came up to Emily and Matthew, they're just like, ha, ah, ha, and I'm just like... Ah. It's funny, because all, they're talking about the clowns, the Joey's keeping themselves to themselves, and it's funny, actually, I really liked learning all of the circus jargon, because I love learning about, like, the specialized jargon for different things, like for fighter pilots and for circus people and all different things. You know, everyone has their own set of jargon for, like, group you're in, and I always find it interesting to learn about those kinds of things, so I thought that was cool. Anyways, the talk of the Joeys and the Elites keeping themselves separated from each other kept making me think of, like, the clown confidentiality code, and they're like, we're separated yeah, from everyone else, and then I started making it feel like it was, like, some creepy clown cult, and then I started thinking of, like, the, the Dark Carnival cult. and Juggalos and Fago and Special Stardust and stuff, and I was like, oh no. Um, the clown that was talking to Matthew and Emily? Pockets. Yeah, it sounded like the clown from the, um... Like Father from, Like Wooten? Like Father Like Wooten. 
like the one that was the leader that was telling mm -hmm. his voice was a lot Connie. deeper though pocket's voice was pretty airy i mean it was it was a little low but it was really airy the way he spoke whereas the the clown from like father like wooten was kind of like a mac with clowns and this is what we're doing and stuff I, his accent wasn't clown that mafia. thick his accent wasn't that thick but that's that's the general idea of his voice with clowns, you know, and this is what we'd be doing with our stuff in the pockets and the little clown cars. Clown we stuff you in and throw you off the bridge with the cement overcoat. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, yeah. So, I was, um, for a little while, I was a little suspicious, like maybe just wondering. I wasn't like convinced or anything, but I was wondering if it was... What was the clown they were looking for named again? Noodles. Noodles, because... Nina says she was, like, trained by him or whatever. So I was wondering if it was, like, partly Noodles, partly Nina. Mm. And they were, like, working together or something. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, it was funny because this, is, this was the point where I started to think about it. And I was like, Nina is being really suspicious. But the question is... <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, Nina was being suspicious. And I was trying to figure out... Is this, like, the obvious type of suspicious, where it means that she's not the person? Or is it the real type of, like, it's supposed to be subtle suspicion, but I just find it really obvious, and it means that she really is it? And I was thinking it was the latter, and then I was right, it was the latter. But I couldn't tell if it was, like, if she was supposed to be overtly suspicious or not. And I was just noticing it anyways. Which I was... Because it was kind of obvious. I, I just figured it was her. Yeah. It's funny. I actually guessed earlier. I had just like this one little thought in my mind for a second. I was like, it'd be funny if Esteban was actually Noodles all along. And then he was. Seriously? Yeah, because when he went to the train... I wasn't paying enough attention to the story to actually do things like that. When Noodles went to the trailer, to Esteban's trailer, I was thinking what could be going on. I was like, what if he is Esteban? I was like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> and then he was. <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, Devin, way to diss the people that wrote it. No, I just thought, I'm like... For a the... fan-written episode, though, if you think about it, it's not that bad. No. It's not that great. An episode in Odyssey standards... If it Compared was to the rest like of the album, which is... Been... ...or something, but... Yeah. No, considering it's written by fans, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Ish. I watched Good as Gold and Death is the Only Answer the Other Way. So, talking of fan episodes, yes, this is a good one. Um, anyway, looking back on it, like, it is an actual one written by Nathan Hoopler or something like that. Even if, though, it is a fan episode, I'd expect some more plot twists or something. Yeah. If it had been Emily all along. <laughs> I wish. Then they could, like, cart her off to prison and she wouldn't be in any more episodes. Well, they wouldn't have. I mean, they didn't cart Nina off to prison because they're the circus and they're like, shun the police. It's the popo and stuff because they're carnies and stuff. Stereotypes. Oh, uh, wow. Well, I'm going to get your friend to watch this and then she'll hate you more. And they, they said P.T., the owner of the circus. I was like, seriously? Really? You're going to go there, apparently. Uh, what? They said the owner of the circus's name was P.T., as in P.T. Barnum, the the man who invented the circus. Uh, how would I, how would I know who invented the circus? Well, he's, it's quite a famous name. Uh, so overall, rating of this episode. Um, well, the end was another annoyingly over-the-top ending from Emily Jones, like she ends every episode. Yeah, I was, I was hoping like, that there wasn't going to be any more of that kind of stuff in the episode. And then I'm like, oh, maybe maybe they're not going to have any annoying stuff after all. And I was like, nope. Here. Yeah. Take it. You don't want it. But we're going to give it to you anyway. <coughs> yeah, so overall... I'll give the episode uh, 2.4, I think. 
because, I mean, 2.5, technically speaking, should be an average rating, and even though I didn't like the episode, it really wasn't that bad compared to, like, if you want to look over all of Odyssey history, it was basically only a little bit lower than the average episode I'd expect. I mean, compared to the rest of the season so far, it's pretty low, because the season so far has been really good. But if you want to compare it to, an, like, the older ep some of the older episodes that are, like, pretty mediocre, it's, it's pretty on average. Like, which ones? Like, you know, um... A Change of Heart. That's, the, like, my least favorite episode. The Day After Christmas. That one's not that bad. Change of Heart is way worse. Yeah. Anyways. Um... Uh, I don't know. I liked it more than A Change of Heart. Uh... I'd probably give it a... 2.3. I didn't really like it, but... Considering I didn't like it, I would give it a 2, but I'm giving it a 2.3 because it's fan. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fan written, and yeah. that's actually pretty impressive. Oh, we should probably talk about the theme also. <coughs> and, yeah, so that's today. what I'm giving it. Um, theme-wise, the, uh, the theme itself on Trust is... Yeah. The theme itself is good. The way they portrayed it in the episode, I suppose, is right, but... I don't know, it wasn't really strongly put in there. I don't think I didn't I mean, even catch the theme. It was about Where trust. Where were we supposed to see it? It was about trust and people breaking trust. Like Nina broke the trust to the rest of them and Esteban broke the like he was actually noodles all along. I mean themes where episodes where the theme is conveyed by really weak things, but having it in there multiple times with tiny examples, that's not really great, and I can't really think of any other examples, but there are other examples, and I don't know, I don't like that. Yeah. So, is that it? I think that's all we have to say then. We've rated the episode. Um, so, like I said, next week is going to be the Beginner's Guide to Odyssey number two, which will include... Let's flip through... Big, big secrets. Flip, flip, flip. All right, the, the second book controls all. Ooh. The the second part next week will have main places such as other towns, including Odyssey, other locations, including Wits End and rooms in Wits End. Main inventions such as the Imagination Station, Room of Consequence, Inspiration Station, Edu Link, etc. Main sagas, such as Blackard Saga and Novacom, Leonard Meltzner and the Green Ring Conspiracy, and episode formats, such as KYDS, Kids Radio, BTV, and The Twilight Zone. So that will be amusing. It will be fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be so much fun. It'll as be you can, fun. As you can recall no, from the first fun. time that we did one, this is probably not an episode you're going to want to listen to unless you, it's more of a reference episode, so you can go back and use it as a little video thing to bone up on certain subjects or find out about things. It's not really one which someone would probably want to watch for entertainment. That's more of a, a resource yeah. guide. So i uh, give you that warning again, just like we did when we did the first part. I don't have no idea how long this one is going to turn out to be, whether it'll be longer or shorter than the first one. I'm really not in a good position to judge on that, because temporal things, podcast-wise, are definitely not my strong suit. Yeah, I'm guessing that it will be shorter, though, because last time it was all character stuff. Yeah. So that took quite a while. We're hoping it will be shorter. Yes. Yes. Anyway, so... That's all we have for you. Oh, um... Should probably give a little uh, something about the Odyssey Adventure Club. Should be mentioned. Um, Indeed. So that needs to be addressed. As you may know, <coughs> uh, what is going to be happening in the future of the plan is there's going to be a thing starting in January called the Odyssey Adventure Club, which is essentially a Netflix for adventures in Odyssey, which will give you online access to listen to all of the episodes, probably barring band episodes and such, all of the purchasable episodes. 
And that's uh, a fine and dandy thing. I think it's a great idea, and I think it's really cool that we can have, like, basically a Netflix solely for Odyssey. That's, like, a really cool idea that we have enough episodes and stuff to do that. I think Doctor Who should do the same thing because also has enough episodes, and I think people would really like that for the classic Who and stuff because it's hard be to cool. get a hold of them. But yeah, it's basically an Odyssey Netflix, which is all well and good. The problem is that there are going to be exclusive Odyssey Adventure Club episodes, which will be released once per month, adding up to an album per year. This means that in terms of um, regular radio airing purchasable album episodes, such as album every album that's ever aired before, like 57 airs on the radio, and then you can buy it, or you can digitally download it, instead of two albums a year, like we've had for so long, except for this last year, but that was a special case, there will only be one album a year aired like that, and then the other 12 episodes for the year will be aired on the Odyssey Adventure Club. They will not air on the radio, they will not be available for digital download, they will not be available for hard copy purchase. They will only be available to listen to, not to download, if you're paying $15 a month for the Odyssey Adventure Club, which adds up to $180 a year to get a single album, which is approximately 10 times the price of what an album costs to buy now. So, yeah. And I should mention, these aren't random Slice of Life episodes. They are, in fact, going to be extremely important to the Odyssey canon and character development and stuff. So they're not just, like, random fluff episodes. They are going to be important, and they will not be accessible to everyone. So, yeah, it's a bad thing. So, a lot of us Odysseans right now are trying to make our voice heard and air our grievances towards it and suggest suggestions on how it can be improved. Hopefully not big changes because, you know, this plan has been implemented, their focus is pretty far into it, and so the more they try to change things, the more money loss will occur, and we don't want that right now. Focus is going through financial struggles, and we want to do our best to support them financially, to buy products, and to donate money so that they can keep making Odyssey and keep doing family counseling and other services that they do to help families across the country. Please support Focus on the Family. Please don't download episodes illegally of Odyssey or of anything else that they do. And yeah, so uh, in my view, the, uh, the easiest fix for the thing is that the episodes are not exclusive. They can be exclusive initially when they come out on the club, but say a month, if uh, the launch, parts one and two, are going to be the January and February episodes, which will follow up on the pilot part one and two, which is the finale for season 57 here, which is going to be an important storyline involving all the main characters, apparently, so it's really something we want to hear. So if, say, the episode airs for the Odyssey Adventure Club in January, part one, then in February, part two can air for the Adventure Club, while part one airs on the radio and then we go that way through it. So there's still the same incentive, basically, for people to join the Adventure Club to hear in advance, but we can still hear the episodes eventually and not miss out on that canon, because otherwise people will just pirate the episodes and Focus will lose more money on it that way, and that's not something that we want. So please, uh, you can write on the Adventures and Odyssey Facebook page or send an email to Focus or to, uh, I guess, not really Brock, because technically he's not in marketing anymore. He's an executive producer now for Odyssey. So, let someone there's know. There's also still lots of incentive to join the Adventure Club. Yeah. Not just for the new episodes. Yeah. Like, they're, they're all, there will it, also be other special... Join it, you can listen to every single Odyssey episode. And there will also be other sorts of bonus features and behind-the-scenes things that you will get included with being subscribed to it. But the, the big kicker for it is the... Uh, and the big draw for it as well are the exclusive episodes. That's the big point here. So please let your voice be heard on this subject. And other than that... I think that that is all that we have to say. So, this has been Victoria. And he is Devin. And thank you for joining us on our side of the YouTube on 
the Adventures in Odyssey Oddcast. Oddcast. <laughs> you should start doing it like that. Yeah. Bye. Bye.